on. Bingo, we're back. Three o'clock rock with Clarissa Marquardt on bikes at Pacific Guardian. She is with Pacific Guardian, uh, the two towers there, one of my favorite buildings in downtown. Welcome to the show, Clarissa. Thank you. Great Glad to, to have here. you here. Yeah. Um, you know, I just want to want to say that, that I care about bikes a lot, and this is about downtown's unique bike repair station uh, at Pacific Guardian. Um, I think that public spaces are very important, and I personally was sensitized to that issue when I was watching, uh, I guess it was educational television, and I saw a talk by a guy named Michael Kimmelman, who is the New York Times architectural reporter, mm -hmm. and he was giving a talk at Yale, um, and he was talking about public spaces. And I realized from that talk that Honolulu you know, although it has many redeeming features, it's, it has not done a very good job at public spaces. A public space is a space that's comfortable and warm, that, that draws you in, sort of like you see in Europe all the time. Um, and uh, a, a public space is a place where you, you know, you feel at home, <clears throat> that makes you want to be where you are. Usually involves food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that goes hand in hand. And so forth. And you guys at Pacific Guardian, you're thinking those thoughts. You're thinking that's important. What, what is your thinking? Well, I think, generally speaking, we take responsibility. We want to engage our environment. And that includes the public spaces that you're talking about, whether it's on the street side, the curbs. We've even, there's a strip, a median strip on Nimitz Highway that mm -hmm. we've taken, con I want to say control of, but we've taken um, ownership of. And we, it doesn't belong to us. It's a city and county. We actually took out all the weeds, put in new grass, oh, and great, we water it great, and things of that great, sort. Great. So it's, it's really about just engaging and being a part of what we have, what we're blessed with. The courtyard is also another place, too. You're a big building. It's a big you're, building. Your building involves hundreds of millions of dollars of capital investment. Yes. Um, <laughs> why do you do such things? Does it, does it return a profit for you to do that? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it returns a profit, but there is intrinsic value, right? Um, people are happier when they see greener spaces. People are happier when they see a tropical atmosphere in our courtyard. It keeps our tenants happy. It keeps our passerbys happy. It's um, a give back, I guess. That's kind of how we see it. Our ownership is yeah. very, very serious about being able to give back. I love that. We all love that. We're fortunate. Good citizenship is yes. what it is. We want everybody to think that way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we focus today on bikes. Why bikes? And why did you do this special bike bike station in, in front of Grover, excuse me, Pacific Garden? <laughs> That's how I remember it, too. And... Um, <laughs> But I think it's the brainchild of our asset manager, Brian, uh, Brian Moore, and he was traveling and he <coughs> saw Here's this. Here's a shout out to Brian. Brian, hi. Hey, Brian. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so he was traveling and he came across a station of this sort and he thought that would be a wonderful add to what we wanted to accomplish. We have um, bike racks, I guess, you know, for the public. But more importantly, we knew that we're going to have, the city is very serious about adding back bike lanes in our neighborhood and so we know downtown. A, downtown for instance we knew a lot of our tenants were into um, conservation energy conservation sustainability and they wanted alternative transportation modes and so a lot of them were asking about what about bike lockers what about bike facilities things of that sort so we haven't turned a deaf ear i guess mm -hmm. and so as brian saw this he's like how about let's put a, spa a station because if we have more bikers They'll need a place to work, and let's create something that's artistic and still, you know, functional. So that's what this bike repair station is. It's yeah, it's a great, it's a station. And it, what it says is that we, we care about the city, we care about transportation in the city, we care about our tenants, which is a great statement to tenants. It's a, as you said before. It's one the of shows. our most important statements. Yeah. And, so. and, um, and we are part of a larger system of things that encourage people to ride bikes. Yes. You know, Hawaii could real, or Honolulu could realize its destiny if it could turn into a bike city. Right, there's the bike share program. You Coming know, we've, soon. we've actually hosted some of their um, activities over the years, you know, those who are have bike share-like ideas. Um, we know, we embrace it. Um, in many ways, we're supportive. We want to understand how it's going to impact us and how we can help. So. Yeah. So let's talk about what it is. We have a slideshow. Can we do a slideshow with you? Sure. All right. Uh, Clarissa Marquardt, a slideshow. The meeting place. Go for it. 
So this is what we talked a little bit about green space and how do we um, engage our tenants and have a place for them to just really commune. That's what PGC does. We have eateries. We have a cafe, a Honolulu Cafe. And what we want to do is provide a place where teams, our tenants, can actually come down and meet. You know, instead of being upstairs, they have beautiful views, but yet they want to be in the greenery. So that's one of the reasons why we say that PGC is part of this meeting place arena. Yeah. I, I think that's important to doing business, actually. You know? It's key. We have Wi-Fi there. You know, in the courtyard. In the courtyard. And so you're absolutely right. You'll have a lot of independent freelancers come through. And they'll be in our courtyard. And they'll, they're will they waiting for their next appointment with our tenants. Yeah. And they're engaging in business. They're yeah. being continuous yeah. you know, in their... I think, you know, if you, if you meet in an office, if you have a, a meeting that is an important meeting, you know, or a substantive meeting in the office, it blurs into all the other meetings in the office. Yes. And, you, you know, in your recollection of it, you just see a lot of office walls. But if you meet out, outside, that, that, that tapestry, that tableau, is different than any other meeting because now you're remembering the greenery, you remember the table you sat at. The aroma. An aroma, food. maybe food. Ex yeah. uh, there's a lot of food. Yes, <laughs> so true. And there's brainstorming. Brainstorming definitely happens more actively, I think, in that environment. Yeah. You know, we also have, you know, I don't want to encourage us, but we do have pubs too. So that also, you yeah. know, encourages creativity and relaxation in their thought process. So um, we, we love that. We actually have, uh, on Fridays, we have music. So people can come down. I have and they, to go there. Maybe please. we take some video of the music, you know? <laughs> please, yes. Lunchtime, we have music every yeah. Fridays. Yeah. We have popcorn. We have a lot of different things that <laughs> encourage people to come down. You know, it reminds me of, um, of, a, of a city in France. Uh, and, uh, well, most cities in France. You have a central square, mm. which you have. Yes. And you have yes. restaurants around the side, maybe ice cream, um, oh, maybe a sandwich, whatever. And you can come and, and enjoy. And there's always music, you know. And, and this is a European life. concept, yeah. Right, right. So the question, though, is, and we had a show about this one time, is could we have a glass of wine there? <laughs> well, we have events. We have a lot of tenants that actually throw functions. Oh, yeah? Okay. So I guess I must say that if they were to do so, they would have to have a license. Yeah, that's know? the problem. Yeah. Yes. Um, but we do have, like I said, we have Ferguson's right there. Yeah. You can definitely have a glass of wine there. And they have a little courtyard on the outside, too, that you yeah, can yeah. enjoy that. Yeah. So. I would love to say, yes, come, because <laughs> I love wine, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, there's, 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 there's things other, you could do. Who knows what will happen in the future? Exactly. There's things you could do. You could ask, and we can see. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you, you're starting to get the picture. You're starting to get the picture about Pacific Guardian. It's, it's, a, it's a brand. It's a franchise. It's a special mm, persona in the downtown community, in the business world. And of course, at the end of the day, they like to fill up the building with tenants. But in the process, uh, you know, they're creating a persona that's really very appealing. Uh, we'll take a short break. We'll come back and we'll talk about how that fits in the development of our city. Hi, I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia. I'm the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. It's a program where we discuss the impact of change on workers, employers, and the economy. So join us every other Tuesday from 4 o'clock to 4.30. We're live in the studio on Working Together in Think Tech Hawaii. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Hi, my name is Seymour Kazimersky. I have a show called Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. Our show is about opening minds and facilitating conversations. To tell you the truth, I have no idea what we're going to be talking about. I have no idea who our guests are going to be. But I guarantee you we're going to have lots and lots of fun. Aloha from Seymour's World.
bike. bike. It's a bike. <laughs> a great bike. That's a nice bike. Yes. It's a so uh, we have some more photos. Let's finish those and you can, uh, you know, help us with the slideshow. What's, what's going ah, on here? So this is actually what I was just chatting to you about in the break. We know that our landscape or our, um, make, our tenant makeup is changing with the times. We have a new generation. You know, that's, that's because our makeup of the city is changing, yeah. So true, so true. So we need to be proactive. We need to basically engage, not only to have a meeting place, but how do the millennials, for instance, how do they want to interface with each other in their work environment? So we were thinking of, let's have fun. Let's start adding different things. We have a ping pong table right now. You know, that's, so there's another slide that actually shows that. Oh, no kidding. So you'll actually see people having meetings, and then right behind them, people are playing. You know, because I think millennials, they work hard, but they also like to play. Yeah. They like to relax, yeah, and we yeah. want it to be able to, you yeah. know, service that need. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's just a lot of things. We have a lot of, this slide talks about all the tenant events that we have. We have, oh my gosh, that's a, on the bottom, there's our tenants. Those are tenants dressed up as Pac-Man and the different <laughs> get-ups. It's just a fun place. You have to come not only during lunchtime, so. okay? You come during the holidays. The interesting kind of tenants you have at Pacific Garden. Yes, Garden. right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, especially the one with the lion. <laughs> well, it strikes me that, uh, you know, as I said, the city is changing. The demographic of the city is changing. It better. It needs to. Uh, we, we can't have the glass ceiling anymore. We've got to allow for opportunity. For younger people, we let, let, let the millennials come in, do business, be your tenants. Be successful. Be successful. Yes. Make money, make, make new economy for us. They are the driving, lest we forget, it's not state government that is the driving force. It's, it's, it's the, the people who are in business, who, you know, earn money, pay salaries, all that stuff. Absolutely. So, you know, I really I commend you and Brian on the notion that you're part of the changing landscape in uh, Honolulu. You want to be. Yeah, and, and, and I don't think a lot of buildings are doing that, actually. <laughs> you're ahead of the, head of the, uh, the pack. I can't for speak sure. for the other buildings, but I know we've been talking about it for a while. It's just about just trying to fund the projects that we think will probably make the most impact. Yeah. You know, um, and some of them are just fun. You know, we love that. A lot of the people who work for Pacific Garden Center, they just enjoy, you know, having a good time, too. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, can, I can see, for example, you know, usually business uh, office building landlord wants to see nationals, wants to see successful businesses in there. We so have a lot of them. I'm sure you do. Yes. I mean, an enormous amount of square footage, great spaces and all. Um, but you know that coming soon, you're going to have to rent to younger people who are going into business. And that's a, it's a risk there. And I, yes. that's another point of commendation, you know, that you're willing to take that risk. The co-working spaces, for instance, Co right? Let's talk about them. Yes. We've, we've seen them around, and we know the concept. We've entertained the thought. Maybe they should be considered a block, you know, or a block tenant, or maybe a tenant within our space. And if that's the case, you know, we have to look at things differently, right? We talked a little bit about revenue streams and, and a, some of the risks, but yet at the same time, we're going to be able to see them incubate and grow and hopefully become a permanent tenant. So yeah. there's that, um, that little transitional piece that we, we understand happens with the, the new up-and-coming, you know, entrepreneurs. Yeah. So we were thinking that what we can do is they love technology, right they love like i said they work hard we, we'd love to engage more technology around the building our elevators are newly modernized we have the state-of-the-art well, system fast. they're fun too i mean i use the word fun forgive me but because the younger generation they're so used to using touch pads it's so intuitive for them you know <laughs> so we have a, a sophisticated you know dispatching system with our elevators and the older generation has to think about it but the someone a millennial just <laughs> it's instinctual for them, right? And they find that, you know, just it just peaks, peaks their yeah. the creativity. So we want to continue to do that. What I get out of this is that the city is in transition. Even Neil Abercrombie talked about that when Kaka'ako was first getting planned, and that we have to take care of our young people to hold them here. We have to make make it attractive enough so they should stay. 
And we have to, you know, provide industry and business for them and places where they can do their creativity. And uh, co-working was only the beginning, but I, I really like the notion of taking co-working to a commercial level. Yes. Having a space that's a co-working space in a downtown office building is a real turn-on, for not only for me, but for all of those millennials. Yes. You know, if they knew this, they would be, you know, coming knocking at your door just to be involved. Yeah. I think because of networking <clears throat> capability, right there, they we have the best legal minds in our building. We have architects, engineers, I mean, we have scientists, we have security tech companies. They're right there for them too. So you're As right. Resources. Exactly. So they're exposed. They don't have to leave. <clears throat> I mean, I kid about this. We even have a dentist. But it's true, you know. You can eat, <laughs> live, and play in our in our facility, and the millennials. I think that they will find that very attractive, like yeah. you said, and a resource, definitely a resource. I can see it now. You know, they've become familiar with another tenant. Maybe a tenant they can offer them some advice or counsel. Come on down, you know, to the courtyard. Let's have a let's have lunch. Happens all let's, the time. Let's let's cross the generations. You know. Right, and they become clients of another yeah, tenant yeah. or vice versa it's symbiotic for sure yes so uh, you know i mean th this is really remarkable in the sense that we have needed this for a while in my opinion uh we have needed to recognize that generation we have needed to recognize the transformation that we must have um, and biking is part of that uh, and so you know the problem is if you give if you give me one building like this okay and one bike stand like that uh it's a beginning it's, it's a, a beginning. statement but you need them all over town. So you, you guys are the first, and that's to your, your credit. But what, what needs to happen, Clarissa, to make this all knit together? With our community, you mean our downtown community? I think they do have to embrace it as much as we do. I think they, they can't ignore it any longer, that um, there's a need for people to look at alternatives. Alternative transportation right now is what you're talking about. There's the rail. I know it's so controversial, and I don't want to speak too heavily on that, but it's coming, you know? And so how do we prepare? How do we engage the thousands, millions of people that will come right up our corridor? Um, whether it's parklets that, uh, you know, we have Architects Away, for instance. They, they put out some parklets every once in a while on our curbside. Wonderful places of engagement right on the street that's if we got more of that more of a pedestrian feel get people out of the cars that might be a way that we might have to embrace hard to say you yeah. know but definitely it's about um creating some space though some space for all of these people to go and all of these people to create and keep our young people home yeah yeah you know it just it just gave me an idea <clears throat> you know right we we send people out with think tech with a with a mobile camera, we do live, uh, you know, and we walk around downtown and we interview people on the street. It's really an interesting experience. And what we have found is that most of the people we meet on the street down here live a, sh a short distance from downtown. They're in the central business mm, In the core. Mm -hmm. yeah. And <clears throat> they're not from, you know, far away. And one of the reasons they're not from far away is because it's too hard to drive. I mean, I think that that's sure. bars, it's a gate, and it, and it keeps people out because it's such a burden to come traffic. downtown, sit in traffic for four hours a day. But, and I'm, I'm being optimistic about this, but the rail could change that. Um, the rail could have people come without that barrier, come from far away to downtown for jobs, for businesses, for doing business, you know, mm -hmm. in downtown Honolulu. And it's going to stop on Bishop Street there, Bishop and... Nimitz, I think, uh, right near your building, and that is probably, for downtown, a, a revitalization of sorts, yes. don't you think? Yes, definitely. Um, we're excited, but we're also watching because we're not certain, mm -hmm. right? There's Nobody's a lot certain. of uncertainty uncertain. of how it's going to transpire. Um, there's, you know, there's the Aloha Tower. That's Kitty, um, Kitty Corner to us. And so they're with HPU and things like that. It's going to be a wonderful experience for them probably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, we want to encourage and be happy for the neighbors because you're right, the more people that are exposed to our property, in many ways, it's the better yeah. because we can bring in more people that want to, you know, do business in our property. But um, it's I have a prediction for say. you, Clarissa. My, my prediction is that other buildings, who knows, maybe because of your appearance on this show, okay, Clarissa Marquardt, Pacific Guardian, uh, 
because of your appearance on the show, they're going to get the idea in other buildings, and there are, what, you know, at least half a dozen other major office buildings uh, in that area. Um, they're going to get the idea, and downtown could change with this change in culture that you're creating. And that Perhaps. could attract a lot of people, new businesses, new, new retail, um, new, new, uh, new activities in the downtown. I like your prediction. I, I think it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's going to happen, and it's, it's different from Kaka'ako where there's a master plan. With downtown, it's ourselves. It's the building owners themselves seeing the need and the desire to yeah, change. It's organic. Right. And part of that has to be HPU, because we see them here on 4th Street. They walk up and down, those kids, you know, from the top to the bottom, and they, they, they fill the street. They fill 4th Street vibe. every day. Yes. And they're so much fun. We go and interview them, too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, they, they lend a new, a new tone to the downtown area. Yeah. Downtown is in transformation. It is. We're trying to be more safe for them. Yes. You yes. know, um, we're trying to be more visual, more lit, more, yeah. you know, and, and you're right. I'm glad that they're there. Um, they bring a, a different, they've, you know, they, I think what they're doing also is they're expanding all the way around too. So you, it wouldn't be surprising that you'll see them kind of go into our side, our buildings sure. too. You well, know, some of your businesses will attract them. Right. Um, you know, they can go and eat in the courtyard too, and all that. So I, I think it, and it's only a block away from you know where right across the, the street. Tower, yeah. <clears throat> and then of course there's Chinatown, which uh, you know the thing going wet, wet was it wild and wet. <laughs> uh, on the wild side uh, this past weekend. Look at all the restaurants there now. Yeah, in exactly. There's a, a kind of a re vibe. revitalization in Chinatown. Definitely. Too. Yes. And this has an effect on downtown. Yes, right? the arts. So the arts, the arts are coming. Yeah. We have pop up galleries. Um, we really, um, every time we have an opportunity, we'll invite artists to come. We've actually just recently, probably a, maybe a couple of weeks ago, we had some UH artists. In the courtyard. Yes. No, um, actually, in one of our suites. Ah. So it was a it true, gave them space. A That's true very nice of gallery. You. Yeah. You know, so that tenants and patrons could um, see their work and they can be exposed. That's really what we're about. Brian, Sheila, everyone at PGC, they're definitely into just commissioning new art on site. We have John Koga who put, I don't know if you saw that, I think in one of the slideshow um, pictures, there's a poi ponder in taro, a bronze poi ponder in taro that John Koga commissioned, you know, Wonderful. several years ago. So, so do you, do you, if I, if I want to find out about events that you're doing in Pacific Guardian, is there a place I can me, look? We, hmm. It's only for the tenants. <laughs> it's <laughs> definitely tenant events, but come and ask us. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yes. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people would be interested in knowing. And I, I like to see a downtown where people walk around at lunch and actually take a walk and see, you know, sights and sounds and events maybe a couple of blocks away. Uh, right. I think there was a time that happened. This could happen again. Yeah. Well, we have a St. Patrick Day like <laughs> yeah. from Murphy's. I'm not certain. Who knows? But right now we're a little bit more low key. Than yeah. a block party of that okay. sort. Okay. Well, yes. you're not low key today, actually, Clarissa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me add you know, one other thing. It seems to me that you know there's there's all good prospect here, and you're revealing it. And it, the the one thing that I think will you know make the deal really work <clears throat> is a city where people can walk and bike. And um, so uh, you know my my nice. own feeling is that King Street the bikeway not enough. Mm. We have that biking everywhere. And I, I wonder how you see the future, uh, because you're involved. You're leading the future. You're you're creating iconic, uh, you know, uh, uh, equipment, so to speak, and situations. This, the bike station, um, and I wonder how you see it evolving uh, the, the, in a, on a transportation basis. Yeah. Uh, well, you. I think we touched upon this, or you might have not had another session. But yes, the the city definitely wants to be in downtown. So our quarter, our Bishop Street is earmarked to have a bike lane. Um, it's probably going to be on our side. Um, and we'll, we, we see that, like I said, we've hosted some bike, um, I, I guess, bike share like, uh, um, gosh, I can't, forgive me. A location. Yes, location. Yeah, those people that yeah. want to see and take surveys and things of that sort. I'm going to see that all over. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, we yeah. have to see that. Um, so will we have uh, 
bikes somewhere, everywhere, I think it's just a matter of time. For us, we're going to have to probably engage in along um, the rest of the city, we're going to have to put more bike stations probably like ours, you know, to embrace them. Yeah. Well, I think uh, we could invite people down to take a look at the one there. It's there now. <laughs> it's yeah. there now. It's been there for and, about and a month or two. We have a picture two. of it. It's, it's painted. There it is. And um, th you can actually repair it your own self. Yes, there's tools there. And um, there's a, a tool pump. kit in the, in, the, in the big stand there. Right. So what people do is they take off their tires to repair them, and there's a pump to um, provide air um, for their tires. And so it's just a one-stop shop for people. Well, it's a statement of humanity and humaneness, uh, I think. And uh, God, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be wonderful if our city could all follow your lead on this? And, and I can't take a... credit, but PGC's lead, yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> and and um, yeah, and, and just do it everywhere, all up and down yes. the street. And I think it would attract not only people but business. And we would all of a sudden have a different image downtown, a different you know persona of the city. Yes, we welcome we welcome people to come to PGC and see what we have and. You know, um, we welcome tenants to prov continue to provide feedback because they have the pulse, too, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. I agree. Well, thank, thank you, you being, for being responsive to, thank you know, you. the new changes in our city and being part of them, of course. That's great. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Oh, I'm glad. Like I said, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Aloha. Okay. Take care. <laughs>